All right, here we are. This is an instructional video of how to use the e-scan. First of all, let's just flip the laptop around and show the little Bluetooth piece. Just goes into a USB port. That's pretty easy information. And look at the cord. Here's the wireless piece. The other end of this uh, piece goes into the OBD2 connector. I'm sure we all understand that. It's all plugged in down there. Okay. If for some reason the Bluetooth does go bad, there is a cable that we'll plug into here that goes into the USB port. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the uh, laptop here and we're going to select the eScan tool. One's like a handbook or instruction book, the other is the actual program. And there's a few things to kind of jump through in order for this to work. But it's pretty good at going out there and finding the vehicle. And, uh, okay, well, they're just sitting here idling. Let's spend a little time over here on these lights or these indicators. Uh, we got bank one, sensor one, bank two, sensor one, and rich lean, rich lean. That's a normal looking pattern. We want that. That means the O2 sensors, the pre catalytic converter ones, are switching back and forth. And, um, fuel trim is in the yellow. Sometimes it turns green. If it's in the red, that's not good. And uh, no, uh, no codes. We got all kind of uh, indicators. All the monitors are complete. Okay, we'll touch more on monitors later. Across the top here, we've got all sorts of tabs to select. So go ahead and you select whatever you like. Okay, or the DTC tabs. Um, no codes pending, or no codes, DTCs as well. We selected monitors. This is a neat page. Um, let's do this. Let's go back to DTCs and actually clear. And we'll show how fast some monitors will run. Some monitors don't, but some of these tests or monitors run pretty quick. They've already run? Yeah, our, our van's already warm. That's so true, we're already cheating. warm. See, some of those would have been red. And uh, like the misfire and the fuel systems, they run quick. Yeah, the O2 sensors would have to have things cooled off, wouldn't we? Okay, oh well. Okay, what are some other tabs across the top here? It'd be fun to see. Uh, PIDs or the parameter identifications, uh, the various lines of data is all that really means. And of course, we're reading. We've got live data, um, all the various PIDs. This tool is really a generic tool, but very enhanced. The folks that put this together, this eScan laptop based tool. Okay, let's go grab another tab. Sharpshooter has some neat options. Under Sharpshooter, we got another set of, we got another row of tabs that show up. We can actually run an engine volumetric efficiency test. Go ahead and click on that one. And to run that test, you have to set a few parameters like engine size, okay, and temperature, and, and that's about all, and then elevation, and that's about all. And you run and drive the vehicle, and, this, and then this will show a theoretical graph. Go ahead and hit uh, start test. I know we're just idling here. And um, what will start showing up is a, a theoretical, which one's theoretical, gold? No, actual. Uh, red the is actual, theoretical. Actual is, is, is uh, what did I just say? Gold is Yellow. actual. Yeah. And the red is a calculated. And so you go drive the vehicle and see how close these two values track each other. It really is an accuracy measurement of uh, your mass airflow and uh, fuel delivery and those kinds of things. So that's uh, volumetric efficiency. Um, let's go grab another tab. Which one's this? Cat efficiency. Cat efficiency. You will go drive the car. There's a preparation to do here. You follow the instructions. It tells you the instructions to follow. Um, no DTCs, uh, fuel trims have got to be good, etc. You actually go and drive the car and it'll kick out a percentage of how efficient the catalytic converter is. Well, actually you've driven that test. 
it's pretty amazing. Um, you're looking for 95% efficiency or better to pass the catalytic converter test. And of course that uh, is really what the computer's looking for, the vehicle's computer's looking for to pass that monitor. Or again, that's really a, a test. Let's grab another tab. Um, yeah, mode six. Now, sometimes we get a bunch of mode six data that relate to the trouble code that um, we might have. Uh, th these lines would show up. There's there's TID or test identification num uh, values and component identification values. Maybe the test is on an EGR system, and it's actually a particular component in the EGR circuit that would show up. Even though the car may not have flagged a code, mode six might give us values over in these columns to show us, okay, what's the test value, the minimum value, the, the maximum value. Are we close to a maximum or a minimum? That's mode six in a really quick <laughs> nutshell <laughs> explanation. But it's a powerful, powerful tool. Sometimes we have a drivability problem, yet no um, trouble codes. That's where mode six will come in. Let's look at the O2 sensor. Did we look at that one? Okay. And uh, here's just a, an example, but let's go ahead and run uh, oxygen sensor monitor. Now here's some values, for example, that similar values you'd see on the mode six table. Okay, so here's some values. Minimum is zero, obviously, the maximum. Looks like we're pretty close to middle on a lot of the values that are actually running or accurate that have been run as compared from zero in the minimum and maximum 1.275. These are engineering values and uh, apparently it's in volts too. So I guess the maximum they want to see is 1.275 volts. We're always taught 1.0 volts, aren't we? Is there any other tab we should show for an introductory use? Of, uh, oh, this is a neat page. You can select which uh, PID you want to have uh, uh, visualized here too. Like here's engine coolant temp. Um, good. Yeah, go ahead and select. We can just show it a change. And so you just hit the down arrow next to the box, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we can select different PIDs and make a linear graph and see how things go, especially on a test drive. That's a good thing. Like measuring engine RPM to say a mass airflow sensor uh, and, and even how the O2 sensors respond would be a pretty powerful uh, little test drive. So in a nutshell, or a quick introduction to uh, E-Scan, um, we kind of touched on sharpshooter, what the O2 tab looked like, touched on mode six, uh, some graphics, PIDs, monitors, which this will be discussed more in class, and uh, what these little indicators over here, I guess at least a, a brief introduction. Wonderful tool, again it's all generic information, but it's far uh, exceeds anything I've, I've seen on the market.